the Denver Radio Real Estate Show with Cheryl Garlock here at Colorado Front Range Properties. Thank you, Joe, my producer. He does such a great job on bringing on some new tunes, and I always like it. I almost forget I'm doing a radio show here and start thinking I'm in some music festival. I almost wanted to start singing with it. Yeah, I did. Absolutely. You know, uh, yeah. Willie, wasn't it? No, John, John Denver. John, John Denver. Denver. Okay, yeah. God dang it. I never pass those John <laughs> quizzes, you know? But anyway, hey, you guys, I have got Tracy Wilson with T IPX 1031 Exchange, which is really stands for Investment Property Exchange Services. So i got to ask you, got, have you ever heard of the word of a, an exchange, you know, a 1031 exchange or a tax deferred exchange? Maybe called a swap. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. Does that work? Do they Sometimes call them? they call them Starker Exchanges, named after the court case that started it all. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Tell everyone, Tracy, what an exchange is, okay, you and why it comes into play. Simply put, you know, you own investment real estate, uh, not owner occupied. It's not your personal primary residence, but mm -hmm. it's any other type of real estate. When you sell it, you've got some sort of gain or profit, you're going to have to pay the taxes, the capital gains taxes on it. Doggone it, Uncle unless, Sam. Wants. Unless you do a tax-deferred 1031 exchange. 1031 just talks about that small part of the tax code that if the clients obey all the rules, buy some other piece of property, the gain gets rolled over or deferred, and they don't have to pay those capital gains taxes, which can be huge. They can be huge, and a lot of times people don't realize that, and especially you know, when you have such a hot real estate market, I mean, a lot of times people might keep that property and rent that property out, and then they might go ahead and buy another home for them to live in, right. and, they, they, and that's a great idea, but you've got to plan. Yes. And at some point in time, you're going to pay the piper. You either got to sell it within, how many years did we decide? The first three years? It, it, after you moved out, yes. Yeah, after you moved out of that home there, you got to sell it within that time frame to go ahead and take advantage of the uh, capital gains exemption. That's right. You know, to be able to go ahead and write any of that gain off. Otherwise, they do not bend a bit on this, do they, Tracy? No, they, no, you, no exceptions, no extensions, nothing to the rules. Now, you know, something else that's really important about being really critical about the rules, it's writing your deal. And when you write your deal, you cannot remember after the fact, or you know, I'm sitting here at the closing and I touched a little piece of my, oh, no, wait a minute, I'm going to hand that back and I want to do an exchange. Can't do it like that, can no, you? No, you have to have a qualified intermediary, that's what we are. You have to have us involved before the closing. So in other words, we have to produce a set of documents that the IRS requires. They have to be done and sitting there on, at the closing table. Right. Now, so let's talk about the intermediary for a second here. Uh, because the intermediary is the person that's or the entity that's going to be holding the cash. So when you do an exchange, you cannot touch any of that money. You app from for just the second you close on it, you never touch it. You have to have an intermediary do that. It does not mean your Uncle Bob. That's exactly right. Uh, it does not mean Uncle Bob. Okay. And in so, fact, sometimes clients will try and use their own accountant or their own attorney yeah. uh, to do the exchange. And if that accountant or attorney or whoever has done any work for the client, directly or indirectly, within the previous two years, they are disqualified and they cannot, should not, be doing the exchange for the client. Wow. Yeah. So let's talk about finding uh, a good intermediary here. Yeah. And because we've had some bad times. And Our industry has had a number of black eyes and a lot of qualified intermediaries literally taking, stealing the monies. I don't know if you ever watched the TV show American Greed. I love yeah. that show. Oh, yeah, I do. Three, four weeks ago, they had one of the qualified intermediaries uh, who acquired a firm here in Denver. Yeah. $155 million, million dollars of exchange proceeds were missing. Oh, the just, a, just a few bucks, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, if, if that is your retirement plan, and, you know, American Greed does a lot of this stuff with the people who've lost all their money, you know, and they trusted somebody else there, and they've lost, it's because you're not doing your own due diligence. You bet. You need to search for a qualified intermediary to facilitate your exchange that is bonded, that is insured, that has deep financial pockets, and more so that has rules and procedures in place that even if they tried to do something illegal, they couldn't. Right. And right. that's one reason I would hope that they would take a look at us. Okay, well, and I'm going to just tell you what guys really here really quickly here. Uh, what happened? Oh, here it is. I want you guys to make a note of this here. If you want to go ahead and check uh, out Tracy, one, you can give him a call. 303-883-5846, 883-5846, or visit him on the web at ipx1031.com. Listen, if you want to call me, 720-373-0654, I'll definitely connect you. You know, I think the other thing that's important that, you know, we were talking about earlier is, is you know, having somebody with the knowledge. Because, again, you know, I'm, I've been around Tracy for a few years and, and just knowing this whole process, it's tricky. And, you know, if, if you make one misstep, 
it's all over. You're toast. You're, You're toast. Over. You're toast. And let's talk about how much those capital gains might be that, that, that they might have, because that's a big deal. Yeah, for many, many years under uh, President Bush, people thought capital gains, they were 15%. You sell some piece of real estate, it's got a $10,000 gain, then about 1500 bucks you would have been out the door in capital gains taxes. That changed significantly last year. Yeah, just this past year. So capital gains now is either 15% or 18.8%. Or 23.8% because you have to add the 3.8% oh that's right Medicare surtax that's in right. on with the capital gains and that capital gains those three numbers I just mentioned were for the gain on the appreciation right there's also recapture of depreciation because it's investment real estate you know what I can only tell you one thing percent yes wow. Tracy we need to have Tracy back don't you guys agree I know we need to have Tracy back here on the show here to talk more about uh, uh, investment exchange properties there. So, you know.